Welcome to Masquerade. In the last year, we've been wearing masks all the time. And in the midst of this, I sought to find a time when masks were perhaps more enjoyable. And so I turned to the Venetian Carnival, where masks were part of hmm, stories of mystery, intrigue, and romance. I'd like to acknowledge and thank my wife, Mary Jo, in helping me make this program. She's responsible for the costuming. In fact, she made most of the costumes and accessories that you'll see. In addition, she plays on one of the pieces. She narrates another and is an actress on still another. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Masquerade. The first piece on my program comes from an organ suite composed by American organist Robert Crandall. Entitled Carnival, it was published in 1950. The suite consists of four movements inspired by characters from the Italian Commedia dell'arte. I'm going to perform the fourth movement of that suite entitled Clowns of Calabria. Perhaps that explains the jester costume. It's based on the Saltarello, which was a triple meter dance and music from the late 14th and early 15th century in Italy. Apparently it was quite a lively dance since the Italian verb saltare means to jump. I don't think I'll be jumping while I'm playing the piece although the pedal part does go all over the place. So maybe I am jumping after all.
Armenian composer Aram Khachaturian wrote incidental music for a play called Masquerade in 1941. He later took that music and adapted it into the Masquerade Suite, a work for orchestra. Three of the five movements are based on dances, a waltz, a mazurka, and a gallop, and in between them are two more reflective movements, a nocturne, night music, and a romance.
The first collection of pieces on this program come from early 19th century Romantic composer Robert Schumann's piano work entitled Carnival. Some of the movements are depictions of his own personality, others are inspired by Commedia dell'arte characters, and others are depictions of some of his musical contemporaries, among other people. The first two movements that I'll play for you today are Eusebius and Florestan, which, according to Schumann, represented opposite sides of his own personality. Pierrot is a stock character from Baroque period, French pantomime, and Italian commedia dell'arte. A sad clown who pines for Columbine, but loses her to Harlequin.
Harlequin is the best known of the Commedia dell'arte servants, and while a capable servant, he's also mischievous. Always in pursuit of Columbina, he's also known for his checkered costume. The next movement is Schumann's depiction of two Commedia dell'arte characters, Panalone and Columbine. Panalone is the greedy, wealthy, troublesome old man. And I am depicting Columbine. Columbine in Commedia dell'arte is often depicted as Pierrot's wife and Harlequin's mistress. In the music, the first and last sections are similar and our depiction of Panalone, and it's more up-tempo and active. The more smooth and graceful middle section is a representation of Columbine. With Coquette and Replique, Schumann depicts a flirtatious young woman and then a response from the young gentleman.
Let me tell you a little bit about the next piece, A Suite for Mother Goose by George Akerley. Akerley is from Philadelphia, where in addition to being a church musician, for a long time he was the arena organist for the National Hockey League Philadelphia Flyers, and then the ballpark organist for Major League Baseball's Philadelphia Phillies. There's six movements in this suite, and the first one is sort of in the style of a late 19th century music hall. Think Gilbert and Sullivan operetta. The second movement, the clock, the organist imitates the sounds of a ticking grandfather clock complete with the Westminster chimes. The third movement, the cats of Kilkenny. For those of you who have cats, you know that sometimes they don't get along so well more to come. <laughs> the tale of Miss Muffet, well, something about a spider and that doesn't go very well either. You'll see what I mean. One, two, buckle my shoe. Well, it's a counting song and a little bit of nonsense. And the final movement, the fiddlers, sounds like hmm, uh, a square dance with a fiddle band, uh, a reference to a famous organ toccata from the late 19th century, uh, a reference to a hockey arena fanfare that the organist might play at a game, and even a music box makes an appearance within the music. It's a lot of fun to play and perform. I hope you enjoy it as well.
The next piece on my program is a parody of the Happy Birthday song written for organ in which four classical music pieces have been adapted or parodied to include the Happy Birthday song woven into the musical texture or in the case of the third movement at least the first two phrases of it. Why a Happy Birthday parody? Well, why not? But as we look back to the past year, 2020, there's a lot of things we can say about it and probably most of them wouldn't be so good. But one thing is true that is good about 2020 is that every single person could find their birthday on the calendar because it was a leap year. It happens we're recording this segment of the program on Sunday, February 28th, 2021. And as I look at the calendar, I realize that some people are sadly left out from even being able to have a day to call their birthday this year. So for those people who are leap year babies, this one's for you. Uh, 
I'm here holding uh, one of Solo's uh, toys, one that if you squeeze on it in the right place, the sound chip in it plays the happy birthday song. I won't trouble you with that. And besides, it's not his birthday today anyway. Talking about the piece, the first movement is a parody of Johann Sebastian Bach's famous Yesu Joy of Man's Desire. The second movement is a parody of the Hallelujah movement from the oratorio Christ on the Mount of Olives by Ludwig van Beethoven. The third movement celebrates the ragtime style of African-American composer Scott Joplin. And the final movement is a parody of John Philip Sousa's March, The Stars and Stripes Forever. And Mary Jo, on her digital accordion, will play the famous obligato piccolo part of that march at the end. And to everyone, happy birthday, whatever that may be. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching our video. We hope you've enjoyed it, that we've brought a little bit of comedy, laughter, and joy to you today. Till next time.